welcome back uh, to week 11 um i hope uh, you are enjoying the class again i hope it is making some connection to your uh, otherwise uh, discussions uh, otherwise interactions with people outside the class given the topic uh, i'm i'm guessing that some of it is making sense in the real world also you're able to connect to it you're able to think through uh, some topics that we see in the class uh, so this is week 11 Uh, so primarily what we are going to cover in week 11 is privacy laws and regulations i think it's extremely important to think about have an understanding of the uh, laws and regulations also because i think as technologists we generally end up uh, thinking more of technology uh, and less of uh, laws and regulation i think we'll not go into detail what i'm going to go through is i'm going to give a list of um, uh, sort of say dump a list of uh, act and uh, laws around uh, the privacy across the world some discussion around what's happening around the world uh, but primarily then focus on focus on our uh, it act uh, india 2000 it act amendments of 2000 and 2008 uh, then uh, <clears throat> personal data protection bill uh, that's under review and uh, non personal data uh, um, framework that has been proposed and lastly gdpr which is a european uh, uh, privacy directive so those four things i'll go in detail but other other than that i will keep uh, many things slightly uh abstract what have we covered until now we have covered um, particularly in the last class we covered this very interesting thing of how to use mobile phones um uh, that are publicly available and how to create a uh, privacy awareness among people we also looked at uh, uh location based services how uh, your check-ins your tips done on foursquare can be used to find out where you live where you work all those kind of information right and then the rest is uh until week uh, on 10 we've seen basics of privacy anonymization techniques all of that again please remember this is an introduction to class so, so if i were to say this is privacy 101 class um i'm 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 sure if there are uh, if there are students in class who are interested in taking any of these topics there are uh specialized courses only on these topics for example only on anonymization i know people teach only on anonymization techniques a different class for example this week on privacy laws and regulations i'm pretty sure we can teach a one semester course on uh details of uh, laws and regulations on privacy why do we need laws and regulations right so um laws and regulations are generally the top down approach which is um um constitutional rights uh indian penal code at a uh, act or a law level provides uh, provision for privacy then it becomes much more easier to implement it and having a regulation will also be able to restrict give deterrent for criminals to misuse the data um enable people to uh use the mechanisms for for in in a better way all of that will happen if it is in the uh, top down approach which is what a law or regulation is written for the country everybody should follow it income tax returns income income tax returns has to be filed as in 31st of march and uh, with with um, uh, some um, relaxation of dates if you're not submitting it's it's actually a crime so that's why laws and regulations are extremely uh, important so let's look at <clears throat> 
uh, privacy laws around the world. Now let's like take a whirlwind tour of what privacy is across the world and then we'll focus it on only in India. Privacy laws, right? Privacy laws um, around the world gives, um, so US, so two very clear distinction between US and Europe, you will see. The way that they think about privacy laws itself is very different. US thinks very much like a sectoral specific, which is for few slides later, yeah, the slide if you see, uh, every law is for a particular sector, right? So credit card, uh, financial, uh, communication, information, right? So specifically written for a particular sector. Whereas Europe does it at a generic and a directive level. They would say that, look, this is what we define privacy as. This is how it should be implemented and leave the implementation for uh, the every sector, every organization to, to, to take it and implement it in their way. I mean, you can discuss pros and cons of each of them, sectoral specific, because in sectoral specific, I meaning if, uh, if, I mean, for, for, uh, organizations which are involved, they have to actually understand, for example, let's take if TCS and Wipro are involved in projects with the US, just imagine the different sectors if they are implementing projects, they have to know different uh, acts very well, laws very well. Whereas European directive is just one, either you do it in uh, telecom or you do it in financial sector, everything is just the same. But the advantages of uh, sectoral is that it can be very detailed. The act can be very detailed. The implementation becomes slightly easier because it is very detailed. You have all details necessary for implementing the act or uh, act. So that's why so that's the clear distinction between um, US and Europe. I mean, there must be <clears throat> some reasons why uh, uh, US and Europe decided to uh, go in these two different directions. Um, so US mostly uh, sector specific laws with relatively minimal protections. Federal Trade Commission, FTC, uh, we have mentioned FTC in the class quite a few times, has jurisdictions over fraud and deceptive practices. Uh, Federal, Communication Com uh, Federal Communications Commission regulates telecommunication. So this is another organization called FCC. This is an organization called FTC. European directives requires all European Union countries to adapt similar comprehensive privacy laws that re re recognize privacy as fundamental human rights. That's the GDPR requirement now. Right, so they have privacy commissions uh, in each country who help, um, I mean, which is a team which, is, which helps in implementing this at a government level. GDPR, we'll look at GDPR in detail so we can we can skip it here, and then PDP bill. That's the Indian version of uh, uh, privacy uh, protection. Okay, that's the US and Europe side. Let's look at the US, even though I looked at it glancely um, uh, quickly. If you look at the US uh, um, privacy acts, so the first one is Fair Credit Reporting Act only looking at credit cards, credit uh, system, different aspects of credit system, how information should be collected. So in general, I think all of them will fit the concepts that we have seen before, which is fair information practices, concern, limitation of collection, limitation principle, how the information will be used, how long will the information be kept. All of that is just the same, but the 
sectoral implementations are different. Privacy Act, a broader uh, version of the privacy expectations, Right to Financial Privacy Act, which is getting into um, uh, banking, getting into your uh, financial information that of the citizens. There's also um, uh, Cable TV Privacy Act, right? Cable TV, Internet, TV. So the TV as a communication was uh, very strong earlier, right? So that's the um, act. Privacy Act that is written, which is what ads can be presented, what information can you collect, do you, can you know, can the TV channel know uh, what programs you're actually, actually watching for longer, if they know about it, what can they do about it, do with that information, all that is, is, is uh, discussed in this uh, Cable TV Privacy Act. Video Privacy Protection Act, again, aspects of uh, uh, the the TV uh, Act itself. Uh, FERPA uh, is is for f uh, Family Education Right to Privacy Act. This is an interesting act because this allows you as a uh, student control who gets access to your education details. For example, here. Uh, in in India, the institute can send a letter home uh, with your grades potentially, whereas in the U.S. that's not possible unless and until you get uh, explicit concern from the students saying that the parents can know the grades. It's not possible to send these grades. So that's what this Family Education Right to Privacy Act gives protection for who to get access to. Uh, students' grades will be controlled by not just grades, any information about the student, I guess, how well they are performing in school, are they having any depression issues, are they having any um, um, financial issues inside the campus, all of that is controlled by this act. Meaning the citizen gets protection uh, through this act. Electronic communications, which are see electronic communications, video, cable TV, all of this, if you just think about it, 15, 20 years, 30 years before, was necessary because those are the ways of communication, right? Um, a Freedom of Information Act, this is again giving protection for citizens. It has had multiple uh, versions. And uh, the entire gamut of this privacy acts in the U.S. protects the U.S. citizens. Just to just to take a slightly longer explanation of a few other acts in the U.S., which is HIPAA. HIPAA is a very popular so so FERPA. So this is called FERPA. FERPA, HIPAA are all slightly popular acts in the U.S. Uh, HIPAA is about everything about your visits to the hospital, uh, who gets access to your um, medical records. For example, I as a patient go to the hospital, give my um, um, meet a doctor, physician, and uh, some regular checkups, some discussion, some medication is given, I come back. Next time when I go to the hospital, this physician is not there, whereas another physician is going to get access to the data that of mine. For that also, they need approval from me, saying that <clears throat> I'm allowing the hospital to have access to the data for a different physician because the physician, the physician one primary physician is not around. There are many things like this. One example is what I'm giving you. Uh, otherwise, who gets access to the data? Which f example I said, which physician? How long should they have access to data? If I move from hospital to hospital, how, what information is shared from hospital to hospital? All of this is controlled by HIPAA Act, which is called Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. 
will protect medical records and other individual identifi- identifiable health information. India, India also we have been talking about electronic uh, EHR, right? electronic health records uh, and transfer of uh, um, these records between hospitals, um, all that is going on. And very recently there's been a huge discussion around setting up uh, a national level infrastructure for these kind of transfer between hospitals, uh, uh, patients' details, all that. COPA is another uh, act which looks at only children's online privacy. Again, it's 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 passed in 1998. You can see the relevance then very very relevant because of the needs of where more children were getting online and uh, this this would protect um, what information can the organizations collect if the, ch- if the children is a minor. Do they, do, do they need parental control? What parental control uh, is allowed? What is not allowed? Even under parental control, what information can child be able to see? So if you think, if you look at YouTube and all, if you're less than 13, they don't give you access to anything other than cartoons, um, anything other than very basic cartoon. And then if you have uh, your parental control uh, gives you uh, access to some more videos, some more uh, content on YouTube. Uh, so that kind of protection, what YouTube is implementing would fall under COPA. GLB is uh, very similar to the financial one that we saw. Right. Financial privacy here. Right. Hey, it's a it's a modified version or advanced version of uh, the the financial act. GLB uh, is again what bank can use my personal information for, Uh, can they transfer the information between banks, can they sell uh, their own products to me, can they do advertisement, all of that is controlled by GLB. Graham, Leach, and Blyby Act. Um, And again, requires privacy uh, policy disclosure and opt-out mechanisms of financial service institutions. Safe Harbor is another uh, interesting concept that has come between the U.S. and the Europe where, uh, I mean, if data is moving from, so Europe, because of this very strong, I mean, we talked about U.S. and Europe, right, having uh, sectoral and directives. Europe generally has ended up having uh, very stronger privacy expectations compared to the U.S. at least, and therefore, when the data is moving from US to Euro for any of the cross-border uh, cross-border transactions, cross-border business reasons, then Europe wanted to have some level of control over the expectations of privacy. Because it is coming from the US uh, where the privacy expectations are slightly uh, lesser compared to the Europe. So therefore, if information of European citizens goes into the US and it gets misused, what protection can they get? I think it's the same thing when it is coming to India, right? Uh, both Europe and, Euro- Europe and US data are coming to U- India uh, for offshore uh, uh, business, right? So there also, again, protection is given. In India, until now, the primary way the a protection has been given is through the contractual law. Right? So in the contract, it is written saying that uh, I as a company, as in Wipro Infosys, will protect the data, uh, blah, 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 in these forms. Whereas there's no overarching expectations of uh, privacy there. But some of these organizations have implemented these 
uh, expectations and they also have certifications for these implementations, everything to show that they are protecting the data well so the companies can actually give them the business and they will, the engineers who are involved in it, the team which is involved in accessing this data, understand the privacy everything. So US companies self-certify, so how does the uh, safe, safe harbor work? Uh, the companies actually self-certify. Self -certify. The US companies self-certify or adherence to requirements. The Department of Con uh, Commerce maintains a signature list to all the companies that are saying that, look, we will protect the data if it comes from Europe in, in a, with a high standards. Must provide notice of data collected, purposes and recipients choice of opt-out of third-party transfers, opt-in for sensitive data, access rights to delete or edit inaccurate information, security for storage of collected data, enforcement mechanism for individual compliance. So again, these are just a version of fair information practices that we saw earlier in the, earlier in the course, right? Um, so this is a 2000 um, uh, approved uh, Safe Harbor uh, Act. It reserves right to renegotiate if remedies of Europe citizens prove to be inadequate. I think these are, um, I mean, if, if the business needs more uh, privacy, then they can actually rene renegotiate is what is uh, explicitly stated here. So let's look at India now, right? So this this looks at Europe uh, and the U.S. This is primarily the U.S., which is U.S. privacy laws list, um, HIPAA, COPA, GLB, all that, uh, safe harbor between U.S. and Europe. Now let's look at India, right? India, the um, um, as of now, there's no specific explicit privacy law. But there are many places where we get actually our privacy protections written. Uh, Indian, so I mentioned about earlier the Infosys and Wipros uh, do business using this contractual act provision. Indian Penal Code provides some provision, Special Relief Act, Customer Protection Act, uh, IT Act 2000 Amendment in 2008, some tort laws, which is which is a broader. Uh, way by which India has laws specified, PDP bill that I uh, mentioned earlier. Constitution also has some reference to, vague reference to uh, privacy. So that's what is uh, a general overview of uh, um, laws around the world. Now let's <clears throat> uh, now let's specifically look at uh, uh, IT Act, right? As I said, let's go into detail of IT Act. What does it What does it provide? What provisions does it have? And other things. So I'm going to walk through the actual bill itself. So this is uh, the actual bill that uh, has been uh, passed uh, for for and the review now. Right, so the so the definition of an act, an act to provide legal recognition for transactions carried out by means of electronic data interchange. So please remember this is at the IT Act, right? So it's it's at the information technology level, not at the privacy level. Interchange and other means of electronic communication, commonly referred as electronic commerce, which involves the use of alternatives to paper-based methods of communication and storage of information to facilitate electronic filing of documents with government agencies and further to amend the Indian Penal Code, blah, blah, blah. So it is basically targeting the electronic version of the documents, uh, e-commerce as the uh, basis. So again, it goes into the detail of what, what are the definitions of the terms. That's how every act would be written. So you will see in um, amendments document also like that, GDPR also like that. So I'll jump on to showing only what is in the context of uh, privacy, right? That's, just, that's how our interests are for this course at least. Right. So these are all, again, definitions of what is uh, 
um, generally this act is for. Let's jump to where privacy is. There are, there are like a couple of references to privacy in this act, so let's just see only them. So here's the first one. Um, so it is, it is shown under certifying authority to follow certain procedures. Certifying authority is the authority which gives you certificates, digital certificates that uh, you can use in your uh, web services. So what does it say for privacy? Adhere to specific procedures to ensure that the secrecy and privacy of the digital signatures are assured. It's, uh, it's something that the certifying authority to make sure that the uh, digital signatures information is not otherwise available to anybody. Next reference is slightly longer. Yeah. So this is um, penalty for breach of confidentiality and privacy. Um, what it says is uh, save as otherwise provided in this act or any other law for the time being in force any person who in pursuance of any of the powers conferred under this act rules or regulations made there under has secured access to any electronic record book register correspondence information document or other material without the consent of the person concerned discloses such electronic record book register correspondence information document or other material to any other person shall be punished with imprisonment for a term which may extend to two years or fine which may uh, extend to one lakh rupees or with both so this is essentially saying uh, our, our, what is the takeaway from this paragraph right? the paragraph uh, basically says that look if you have access to some information and if you're making it public without the if you're giving it away to others without my concern if my data is there you are punishable you could be punished right? so that's what this paragraph is arguing so that's the places where privacy has a reference in the IT Act. IT Act, again, IT Act is a is a very broad act that Indian government want to have, and therefore uh, the, the reference to privacy has been very, very low. So this when this started in 2000, right? The, the uh, bill was uh, presented in uh, 2000, earlier, to, before 2000, and the act was created in 2000. And 2000 till 2008, people were looking at it and then they wanted amendments. So amendments were made in 2008. Now let's look at uh, amendments. Uh, so this is the, so what does an amendment mean, right? There is already an act. What are changes do you want in that act is what is presented in an amendment. So if you look at it here, it says uh, information, information technology amendment act 2008, right? So this basically is uh, is talking only about the amendments. Again, some only some parts we will be interested in. So let's look at that part, those parts. And I would highly encourage if if you are uh, interested in any of these topics, uh, otherwise I would highly recommend you to go through these uh, documents yourselves and uh, come back. Uh, to discuss any of the specifics if you're interested in. Right. So, so the amendments had one big change. This paragraph explains that, which is uh, Section 72A, uh, save as otherwise provided in this Act or any other law for the time being, enforce any person, including an intermediary who... Um, um, while providing services under the terms of lawful contract as secured access to any material containing personal information about another person with the intent to cause or knowing that he is likely to cause a wrongful loss or wrongful gain discloses without the consent of the person concerned or in breach of a law contract such material to any other person shall be punished with imprisonment for a term may be extend up to three years or fine which may extend to five lakhs or with both 
So one change that happened in amendment is earlier, it was, I think, uh, what we saw earlier, right? It said two years and uh, two lakhs, I think. The fine was, now they made it three years and five lakhs. And 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 while reading, if you, if you look at it, this is, again, very, very legalish in that sense. Uh, it is It is hard to actually understand some of these things directly. You definitely need an expert in terms of interpreting all of this. But the crux of it is anybody who has access to information and unlawfully makes it uh, available for others can be punished. Section 72A. So that's what the the gentle things that you want to remember is what got updated. Section 72A is one of the uh, parts for privacy which got amended, meaning there are many other amendments that happen in this uh, amendment uh, document, uh, but this is the reference to privacy for us. Uh, please, again, um, as I said, these these documents are so heavy, and uh, if, if um, also this is a privacy 101 class, therefore if your interest is in legal side, feel free to read the documents, come back, we can discuss it. Um, more detail also. Uh, we should also remember the some of the definitions, right? Uh, some of the definitions. We just saw one definition, one word here, uh, intermediary, right? Um, so, so I think there. If you think about data itself, uh, data is um, a processor, right? It's a, a company which gets access to our data and then does something with the data, makes inferences, and does business around it. Is, is processor. Right. So, so there are many different intermediary could be somebody uh, who has access to this information. Use, they are not the user, they are not the um, uh, final processor also. Intermediary could be some company again having access to the information. Mm -hmm.